Kusangpo and a very warm welcome to Bhutan This Week with me, Sharap Sangmo. Our top stories for this week. The opposition leader says the Prime Minister's comment on the opposition stand on the three secretaries as meaningless and damaging meant that the position of the opposition was meaningless. Prime Minister assured that those people involved in leaking cluster of English paper 2 last year will be brought to justice. And Bhutan made history after defeating Sri Lanka in his first ever World Cup qualifying match. And now the details. The opposition held a press conference in response to the comments made by the cabinet during the Mitha Press program. Three major issues cropped up. One on the comment made by the Prime Minister on the opposition's stand on the three secretaries as meaningless and damaging, the need to hold the cabinet accountable, and thirdly, the confusion created by the Economic Affairs Minister by changing his statement on the issue. During Meet the Press last week, Prime Minister Tsing Tobge commented that the opposition stand on the three secretaries was meaningless and damaging. This, according to the opposition leader, meant that the position of the opposition was meaningless who did not have a role in the society. <laughs> The opposition leader also reiterated the need for the cabinet to take accountability for not following due process and violating certain sections of the BCSR, the Civil Service Act and the Constitution. Yes, we have also questioned the government for not taking responsibility for their action in surrendering their secretaries before due process was completed. They have surrendered the secretaries without following the rules of procedures that have been established in the BCSR. Now it appears that uh, you know the cabinet is not willing to you know, sort of uh, engage in dialogue with the opposition party, nor take our suggestion to have a third party, a constitutional oversight body to look into the matter. So it appears that we can neither question nor ask anyone to question the government of the day and simply accept the decision of the cabinet regardless of whether they are right or wrong. The opposition party also said that the economic affairs minister was confusing the opposition and the public by constantly changing his statement on the issue. The <laughs> The opposition also said that the cabinet is not taking the issue seriously and does not consider it a matter of national importance. Sonam Chudan for BBS News.
The Royal Bhutan Police is still investigating the case involving the leakage of Class 12 English 2 paper last year. Once the investigation is complete, the findings will be submitted to the Office of the Attorney General. The OAG will then prosecute those involved in the case. Prime Minister will do everything within the framework of the law to bring the culprits to justice. Prime Minister Sring Topki said the government has assured to trace the culprits involved in the English paper leak and make sure they are brought to justice. But that doesn't mean the government has to go on a witch hunt. We have to abide by the rule of law. And the rule of law requires that the examination authority, Big C, they provide their findings. We've sent those findings to the Attorney General's office. The Attorney General's office has advised that the Royal Bhutan Police conduct an investigation. The Royal Bhutan Police is already conducting an investigation as we speak. The findings of that uh, investigation will be sent to the Attorney General's office and then they will be taken to court. Lynch's father said sabotaging the whole examination process as a matter of fact is a criminal offence and the government's duty is to fulfil the mandate, but within the framework of law. Bhutan Council for School Examinations and Assessment confirmed in January that the Class 12 English paper was leaked. Following that, Bixi conducted investigation and traced the suspects for leaking the paper. Pemal Hardin, PBS News. The B8 graduates who were not selected by the Royal Civil Service Commission remain divided on being satisfied after they were recruited as regular contract teachers. 200 of them were recruited as regular contract teachers to replace the community-based teacher whose contract expires within the next six months. The B8 graduates who were not selected by the RCSE were left in dilemma prior to their recruitment as contract teachers. Most graduates shared the difficulties they went through and the disappointment from being deprived from the job they loved and were trained for. Most of the time we have to uh, go to office like RCSE ministry. When we go to ministry, they send us to RCSE. Then when we go to RCSE, then they send us to ministry. And uh, in the process, then uh, we, rest our, we spend a whole day, whole day waiting for the, the person that we are supposed to meet. From more than 400 P8 graduates who competed for slots in the civil service, over 200 of them were screened and recruited on contract. 20 graduates did not turn up for the recruitment. The recruited graduates will be serving on contract for two years and will be paid less than the regular teachers but with allowances. <laughs> National contract teachers and today's contract teacher is different because the current contract teachers have undergone four years of hardship and vigorous training in education college. They will be entitled to 30% contract allowance, so when compared to regular teachers, the salary will be higher than them. During the recruitment today, some graduates were not happy even after education officials said they can still opt for other regular jobs after they gave a three months notice. Some expressed the same dissatisfaction even when they were told they will be allowed to do the civil service exam again. Uh, we are not like other permanent teachers, that's all, I, because only for two years we have to work for as a teacher. The MOE and then the RCSA have decided to take recruit uh, teachers according to their performance in the RCC, which is actually language paper. For those mathematics and physics or the, like other subjects, for language teachers it's okay, but uh, like math physics and then other combinations like biology and the chemistry, actually they have to show their potential in their subjects. It was a moment of relief to others to know that they will be earning much better even if they were recruited on contract basis. With the placements mostly in the eastern Zonkaks, graduates were eagerly waiting to join their workplace this month, even if they were not sure whether their contract will be extended or not after their contract expires in two years. Ultimately, we got the chance to showcase what we have. We are trained in teaching, so ultimately, government at least took care of us and they wanted to take us. Finally our suffering has been ended and hope 
we will be recruited as permanent in future, hoping that only we are joining in a uh, contract basis. The graduates were recruited based on their merit ranking percentage scored in the civil service exam. Chetan Dubchu, PBS News. The outcry from the people of Langtel in Tonsa following the detention of Langtel Gup last month for contempt of court was investigated by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says intermediation is not the reason why Langtel Gup was detained. This was revealed by an inquiry team which was sent by the Supreme Court after the local leaders in Langtel decided to submit an agenda to the upcoming session of the parliament proposing to amend the Local Government Act and withdraw the section that to demands Mangmis to act as intermediators during disputes in the villages. After talking to the two parties between which the GUP claimed to have done intermediation, the team found no intermediation ever took place. The Supreme Court will also release a report on the petition written by the local leaders of the Kewok. Some of the youth who returned to the country after working abroad under the Overseas Employment Scheme said that the Labour Ministry does not entertain them to apply for internship programs or look for jobs. The Ministry rejects them, saying that they have already been employed under the Overseas Employment Scheme. However, the Labour Minister said that that is not true. Clarifying the information to be wrong, the Labour Minister said the Ministry does have a policy called reintegration program and the program is intended to help those unhappy youths working abroad and ultimately return home we always try and put them back uh, in job back in home country so this provision has been already there in our rules and regulations and those who have come back we have already talked to them if you are willing to do any job available job then we are going to recruit them the minister shared that before a person is being sent abroad, the ministry briefs the person on the working condition of the place. Lempo clarified that those stories of Bhutanese being ill-treated while working abroad are totally false. Ironically, it was just that they were not able to work hard. So the gentleman who has gone abroad, he has fu fully understood the work environment. He knows how much salary he has been paid. Uh, is going to be paid, what are the facilities that he's going to get. And he has gone to the place. And we have made a thorough investigation on this. What we have found out is that it's not a question of uh, uh, the, the ill treatment, maltreatment at the workplace or anything that, uh, that uh, the host country has done in contribution with the rules and regulations, but it's just because that he's not been able to work hard it's a question of ethics. Prime Minister also said that the purpose of having contractual agreements with labour and overseas employment agents was to ensure that Bhutanese are not misused abroad. We will not tolerate any labour agents uh, lying to Bhutanese to get them to work outside the country. Uh, this, this will not be tolerated. And uh, in similar fashion, we will not tolerate labour agents that uh, to willingly and purposely breach uh, contractual agreements. That said, uh, I think it's good that the Bhutanese uh, in question went out, saw the world, worked, saw reality and could come back. So there are two ways to look at it. One is our Bhutanese are not hard working. The other is uh, the conditions in Bhutan are far superior than the conditions back home for many of the other migrant workers. Lenchen emphasized that eventually jobs ought to be created in the country. So jobs eventually must be created within the country. We are a country, a population, Bhutanese citizens, we have barely six and a half lakhs, a population of seven and a half lakhs. So we need our people to work in Bhutan. But until such time our economy grows sufficiently and can provide enough jobs it will be good for our youth to work outside, gain experience, get skills, get knowledge, see the world, save money and come back. The government's projection says that 120,000 Bhutanese will look for jobs during the current five-year plan. Of that, 82,000 will be employed within the plan period. Bemal Hadden, BBS News.
The Office of the Attorney General is reviewing the Bangkok Embassy case that involves misuse of millions of funds by the former head of Chancery. The case was forwarded to the OEG by the Anti-Corruption Commission last month. The investigation revealed that the former head of Chancery had grossly misused millions of funds remitted by the Minister of Finance to the Embassy for the payment of medical bills. The matter had come to light in 2011 when the government learned about the huge outstanding bills with some hospitals in Bangkok. It was later revealed that the money was frequently diverted for other purposes. Eventually, the government paid 18 million new term when the hospitals threatened legal actions against the embassy. The government also settled another 6 million new term accumulated for the treatment of its family members on the embassy's account. The investigation revealed that the accused did not account the expenditure to the embassy and neither did the embassy demand it. Some shop owners who lost their houses in Sarpong Town Fire on the night of 15 February are living in the relief camp provided by the Zongkak. They said they are grateful to the Bhutanese government for looking after their welfare. Around 81 shops in Sarpong Town were razed to the ground by a fire on the 15th of February this year. Indian nationals owned around 35 of the burnt shops. Left homeless since then, about 25 Indian nationals have been staying at the relief camp arranged by the Zonkak. We lost everything, but we are very thankful to His Majesty the King for providing food and also for the shelter provided to us. We are very happy staying in Bhutan. Although we are facing problem at the moment, but we are still getting support from the government of Bhutan. We are very thankful to the royal government of Bhutan for rendering such help during crisis. We are getting enough support. Shopkeepers said they are grateful to the Bhutanese government for the assistance rendered. The town that was raised by the fire is one of the oldest towns in the country. The town, which is located by the riverside, was once washed away in a flash flood in 1996. Kampal for Puba, for News. People in Tungku Denba have started constructing houses despite the final go-ahead from the government. Although the decision to extend Panbang Town till Tungku Denba was made in 2013, people have been waiting for the final approval from the government. Therefore, in order to save their construction materials from going in vain, people have begun construction works. Chunks of construction materials have been lying here for about a few years for Panbang Town Extension Works till Tongu Demba village. Landowners in Tongu Demba have been waiting for the government's approval for the construction works to kick start. But with construction materials going waste, people have started constructing houses despite the directives from the government. <laughs> We don't think the new town will materialize. Our houses have become shabby and are on the verge of collapsing. So we decided to construct houses without waiting for the government approval. Otherwise, we are going to face problems with prolonged town planning and waste everything that we have. According to officials from the Dunkuk office in Panbang, a detailed survey was carried by the Works and Human Settlement Ministry and said that the structural design is currently under process. The Dungpa said proper planning is necessary for a new town for the long-term benefit of the people and the communities. People think we are going to shift Panbang town to Tongu Demba, which is not true. We decided to develop Tongu Demba area as the main commercial hub and the present Panbang town will have government offices, residential buildings. We have also issued Lakram to the landowners. 
The decision to extend Panbang Town till Tongu Demba was finalized in 2013. And once the town extension works are complete, Panbang is expected to become the commercial hub for central and eastern Bhutan. Kampal for Pema Samdrup in Shemgang, Sonam Chudin for BBS News. Renew is seeing an increasing number of men seeking services in the last few years. From zero male clients prior to 2008, Renew saw 16 male clients last year, some of them victims of domestic violence. It was in 2008 when Renew saw its first two male clients, and it increased to as many as 19 clients in 2013 and 16 men coming to seek services from the non-governmental organization last year. And some of those who visited Renew were victims of domestic violence. We have had cases where uh, women have uh, beaten up um, <laughs> men. And... Um, these badly, you know, badly, and some have been reported to the police also. And uh, the police sometimes do refer them back to renew for counseling, marriage counseling. And some, some uh, women, you know, as per what the ma uh, men say, that they have been uh, neglecting their, uh, their uh, children, and uh, some of them are alcoholics, so they do not really perform the way you know they want to so they've come here seeking for marriage counseling according to renew more men are now coming forward as a result of the numerous awareness programs it conducts the director of the counseling division says that people have now become aware of renew services for men as well a renew is not only for women but also it's also for uh, men so when we say women, it includes the family, and the family includes children and uh, your partners, your spouses, your parents, and, uh, and of course women. So that's why we generally have termed it as uh, women, but it also involves uh, families, including male. So I think this uh, information and awareness has been created in the communities. So now, Apart from um, women, I think uh, men have also started understanding the, um, the services provided by Renew. Renew provides women victims with shelter and trainings to make them sustain themselves in the future, while male victims are provided with just counseling services at the moment. Sharab Sangmo for BBS News. Sometimes life can be unforgiving, but how you overcome it depends on how you take it. This is a story of a 51-year-old woman from Lukurung village under Tonja Kyok in Tashangsi who is caught in a string of bad looks. <laughs> Wang Mo had gone to Gongfukorolagang to make offering to the local deity for her sick cow. It was a normal day for her until it turned out to be an ill-fated. Few hours after she arrived at the Lhagang, a neighbor called her and said her house was on fire. She immediately rushed back. Her husband had gone to look after the cattle, and the other family who lives under the same roof has also gone out for work. So no one was at home during the incident. By the time Wang Mo reached home, the fire has engulfed more than half of her house. Her husband, who sustained minor burns while trying to salvage few items, was lying unconscious. Wang Mo watched helplessly as the fire reduced her home and belongings to ashes. I don't know how the fire started. People say it might have started from an electric short circuit from my house, but I don't know since no one was at home. Besides my belongings, I also lost around 400,000 worth of business items which my husband was planning to sell during the Gumfukura Sichu. The fire is one of the series of misfortunes that struck Wang Mo and her family. Around a month ago, her father-in-law expired 
and a few days after the fire got at her house, her mother-in-law expired too. The same cow which took her away from her house on that day also died the next day. She currently lives in this makeshift house built with her neighbor's help, and she is not sure what future has in stock for her. We are thinking of constructing a small house, but people say it is dana, a bad year to construct houses. The little timber I had was also lost in the fire, and family members continue to die. So I am in dilemma and don't know what to do. The 50,000 newton that I will be getting as insurance will not even be enough to get timber. Wang Mo believes that the series of misfortunes she is suffering currently will take away all the future troubles and problems. As time ticks by, Wang Mo is hopeful and prays for brighter days in the future. Pemanamge, BBS News, Kanglong. Bhutan made history after defeating Sri Lanka 1-0 in its first ever World Cup qualifying match. Prior to the match, many international news agencies had reported about the skepticisms about Bhutan and its performance against 173rd place holder of the FIFA ranking Sri Lanka. The first half of the match played with much zeal, with both sides trying to score a goal. But to the surprise of most spectators, the Bhutanese players did not allow one single goal to go through. Neither did they score any. I'm really excited about it and Bhutan has been doing really well till now. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that they will win. And the players, they have a renewed sense of pride and enthusiasm in them. And I'm really excited about it. We Bhutanese here in Sri Lanka are very happy to see our country playing in the World Cup qualifying match for the first time and we see them playing very well and we are proud of them and we will support them whether we, they win or lose and we hope someday that we will see Bhutan in the World Cup playing World Cup and winning the at least participating and someday it might, we might even win so we are there for, we are there to support them the second half of the match witnessed a lot of actions by both sides In the 86th minute, Bhutan's midfielder, Tsring Doji, in jersey number 16, in one fluid motion, volleyed the ball past Sri Lanka goalkeeper and inside the far post. The winning goal in the closing minutes was greeted with roars from the supporters. Most supporters were Bhutanese students studying in Sri Lanka. Coach Choki Nima said the team performed well after acclimatizing and with proper diet in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, this is the way of the game. And there is no winning of both the teams. And it happens in the game. One wins, one loses. I think it's normal. And uh, I would like to thank all my players. Uh, they played the way they should play and they made a win 1-0. And for the opponent also, they were a uh, good opponent. And, but the deal was for us. The Sri Lankan coach on the other hand was surprised. He had never expected Bhutanis team to play this well. They were better team today and they deserve to win. No, no, no doubt they were better today. They surprised us. I must be honest, uh, we thought that everything is going to be easy, but things were totally different on, on the field. The home match against Sri Lanka will be played on Tuesday at the Changli Mithang Stadium. Compiled for Kinle Wangchu in Sri Lanka, Sonam Renjin for BBS News. Well, that ends the program and join us next week for yet another edition. Thank you for watching.